everyone, and welcome to the VitaCast, episode 82. I am your host, Tyler Oltoff, and as usual, I've got my buddy here, Kyle Wakeling. What's up, Kyle? Oh, not a whole lot, Tyler. What's up with you? <laughs> not too much, either. It's just another day, and whatnot, but... Yeah. Anyways, <laughs> we've also got... <laughs> We got Liam here. He's back again. How's it going, Liam? Pretty good. Just getting my by, doing my stuff. Exciting. Being crazy old Liam over there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Kyle, you've kind of been going through some shit. I think we should talk about it now. Get out of the way. Let's start okay. off with the bad stuff, get that out of the way, and then right. we'll get into some good stuff. So explain. <laughs> All right, so first of all, we're going to warn you guys, if this podcast sounds fucked up, if we kind of, you know, come back to something or something cuts kind of funny or, you know, just anything goes wrong, we're sorry, but it's beyond our control. Tyler is sitting with fucked up internet, (laughs) and I am using a computer that idling without me touching it right now is sitting at 55 degrees Celsius, which is like 140 Fahrenheit for you American peoples. And on on a good day when I'm actually using it, and it's like, you know, kind of not at the middle of the day when it's so hot, but at nighttime, it's about 200 Fahrenheit. So yeah, I'd burn your fingers off. <laughs> um, but the reason I'm using that is because my brand new laptop that I got almost six months to the day before this happened has been killed by water and it is totally fried. There's nothing that is sal- salvageable. Um, the hard drive and all my data is gone. It's just a giant shit show. So basically I'm without a proper laptop. I'm using this fucking furnace. piece of shit <laughs> <laughs> furnace with no fan. Um, to get by and kind of muddle through some stuff, but it's slow going because I can't multitask like I use, usually do. So, kind of out of sorts because of the loss and uh, using some piece of shit technology. So, kind of not the greatest week for me. And just getting through the shit I had to do and and the morning of the laptop, I haven't had much time to read it. So, yeah, it's been bad. It, it sounds terrible. <laughs> And what way to make it better would be me trying to get you to play Minecraft, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Tyler decided that not only does he want to help me, he wants to torture me at the same time. So he started a GoFundMe campaign where basically you make me play Minecraft and at the same time fund or help fund uh, my new laptop that I need to make TBL run properly and smoothly and put up all the news <laughs> <laughs> so yeah if you're interested in that i think we'll p- post a link up in the um blah, the post on the site <laughs> there we go i'll post that up there uh so you can click that and if you are interested in helping kyle out or making him suffer at the same time <laughs> feel free to help out anything is helpful uh so yeah hopefully we'll get some cash for you kyle and at the same time, I can laugh as you're tortured playing Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think uh, the very first thing that I've decided that I'm going to do when we get in game is I'm going to find out how to kill you because I saw <laughs> on that episode of South Park where they play Minecraft, you can kill people. So I'm just going to, the first thing I'm going to figure out how to do is I'm going to kill you, Tyler. That's, that's the plan. <laughs> well, I have a feeling. So, a that... little bit of torture for you, too. <laughs> I will get something crafted before you can even figure out how to play the game, and I'll just walk up behind you and be like, Yeah, probably. I'll be, like, running at you. You'll build a (laughs) castle before I even get to you, and then, like, hide in it. And I'll be like, oh, fuck. (laughs) (laughs) Well, yeah. Anyways, we're going to do that. And, of course, since I have a capture Vita, I'll be recording it. So look out for a future episode. replays of the torture from this son of a bitch. (laughs) I can't wait. Anyways, let's get into the main thing. This is the Vita cast. We talk about the PlayStation Vita. It's all about the Vita. So, Kyle, you said you didn't really play anything, right? Well, I did play a little bit of Vita, but, like, I mean, a little bit of Vita for me is nowhere near what I should be or want to be playing. And uh, I think I played Tetris um, in the time before the laptop fucked up a bit. 
and I definitely played some kill zone to get my anger out after a while. <laughs> so, yeah, the, not a whole whack of games or a whole whack of time, but I did touch my Vita a little bit this week. <laughs> nah, that's good. At least you gave it some love. Indeed. What about Liam? What has Liam been playing? Okay, so um, basically what happened was uh, PlayStation in the UK decided to have a Japanese sale. And they actually bumped down quite a lot of games to really cheap, so I bought quite a lot of stuff while I was there. Um, so first of all, I bought Shinobido 2, which I played some of it last night, and it was absolutely horrendous, so that was a waste of money. <laughs> um, I also got Sorcery Saga, Curse of the Great Perry God. Um, that seems like it's going to be good fun, actually. Uh, it's like a roguelike, so you die, you start back from the beginning, you lose all your stuff. But it seems fun from the little bit that I've played of that. Um, Senran Kagura Bon Appetit. Um, that was like £4.50, so I couldn't say no to more boobies. Um, <laughs> basically, uh, it's a rhythm game in the Senran Kagura universe, and it's just a real good fun. Um, Sword Art Online Hollow Fragment, that was also really cheap, so I picked that up. I haven't spent much time with that yet, but I like what I've played so far. Um, and lastly, I got Orishiga Tainted Bloodlines as well, which I also haven't spent much time with that. But the main game that I've spent time with this past week is Samurai Warriors Chronicles 3, but I will talk about that later on in the podcast. Well, all right. You sound very busy and loaded with money. <laughs> <laughs> I did get paid in games, week, so that does help. <laughs> That's always... And I also have Steins Gate and GSTARS Ultra on the way as well. So. Oh, jeez. Look at you. Well, so, right. time to rob Liam. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm having a good time. And all this as well, and I'm also going to contribute to Kyle's laptop fund. Oh, there you go. Oh, there you go. Now what you can't be mad man. anymore. <laughs> Kyle's got to be nice for the rest of the episode. <laughs> I, I don't think that can happen, but I can be less mean. <laughs> there we go. Well, all right. So I played a few things. Um, I I kind of was all around on a couple things. Like I started up uh, Yee's Memories of Celsetta. I ran around and realized I had no fucking idea where I was or what I was doing at the time. <laughs> so I quit that. <laughs> gotta love when that happens you start up a game and you're like oh shit what the fuck is going on yep. and then you're like well should I keep going and try and muddle way way through this or go back to the start uh fuck it yeah, I didn't have any <laughs> As patience Tyler did. <laughs> <laughs> I ran around I killed two enemies jumped off of like a cliff and I was like what <laughs> 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 alright different game uh, so then I played a little bit of MLB 15, the show. I played one game and won. Yeah. And then um, I played a little bit of Shovel Knight, ran around and got pissed because I dropped in a hole and lost all my gold. And I was like, let me get my gold back. And I jumped and I went right back in the hole and lost all my gold again. And I was like, Grr! <sighs> So then I quit playing that game. <laughs> and then I can't remember if it was last episode or if I had beaten Dan Ganrapa 2 last episode. you guys remember? If I'd beaten it yet? I don't think so. Uh, I think you were near the end. You said that yeah, you were close to the end of the game. Well, all right. I have beaten the game. Very good, my friend. Very good. So, well done. Did, did it fuck with your mind? It did, and I want more. <laughs> so, that, it's a Not great too game. long of a wait. <laughs> September. Yeah. yeah, but still. Uh, man, I love Dan Ganrompa. Anyways, I beat the game. It's awesome. I love it. Pick it up if you haven't played it. Um, I also played a tiny bit of Minecraft. I was working on one of my survival island levels and hung around and continued working on my treehouse. Uh, I also played a, the, I guess the game I've played the most, and I also don't really like it that much, which is weird, is Mine Zero. Uh, that game was on sale, so I picked that up, and I'm very glad that I didn't buy it physically because I really just am not sure about this game. It definitely feels like a major Persona 4 ripoff. Like, everything just... I don't know. It, uh. <laughs> like, the like the guy... Like, your best friend in the game or whatever, I guess if he, you consider him your best friend, he reminds me completely of Yosuke. Like, his attitude and everything is exactly like Yosuke. And then, like, everyone's... I guess they're called Minds, but they're Personas, basically. Just 
I don't know. It's just everything that I've heard. There's also, okay, I'm trying to not spoil anything from Persona, because Persona's amazing, so I'll, I'll kind of dance around that, but you've got a character named Dojima. Is it Dojima? Yeah, the, the cop dude, right, Kyle? Yeah. It's been so long since I've played Persona 4. Anyways, you got a basically a cop detective dude that looks almost identical to Dojima, and you've got this little young detective, like, recruit guy that's all, like, oblivious and silly, I guess. Like, um, fuck, what's his name? Adachi. Yep, just like Adachi. Adachi. Yeah. Yeah. You got those exact two characters, basically, in this game. I'm like, are you kidding me? (laughs) Ah. So anyways, it's like the people that made Mind Zero just beat Persona 4 and were like, we're gonna make a game like this. (laughs) (laughs) Hey guys, I got a great idea. <laughs> exactly. So, I mean, I don't really like first person dungeon type RPGs, and that's what this is. So, I'm trying to get around that because I just, I don't know. It just, I can't stand that type of gameplay. Uh, but I'm pushing through it, and maybe it will hook me later. But I just also bought uh, J Star's Victory vs. Plus very, very, very early in that game. I've only fought like two people so still don't really have an opinion of it it's it's fun but like i said way too early to really judge it too much so anyways that's all i've played let's continue on we've been talking a lot before we've even really gotten to the the meat of this episode so we've got a ton of reviews here quite a few so i guess i'll start off with the first one and it's the game i was actually just talking about and that is j star's victory versus plus and that was reviewed by brad and he gave it a 3.9 out of 5. And he says, quote, J-Star's Victory vs. Plus is a fun fighting game that is great in small doses. While the repetitive nature of its fighting formula does get tiring after a while, it packs enough energetic excitement to keep you coming back for more. Fighting game experts will be disappointed by its lack of depth, but for the uninitiated, it provides the right amount of chaotic craziness to provide hours of fun, end quote. So there you go. It's a pretty decent review. You definitely want to check out the whole review and get a whole gist of it, especially if you're into fighting games and whatnot, but yeah. Have any of you guys picked this one up? Uh, again, I'm waiting for it to come, and it should come today in the post, so I'm looking forward to playing it. Alright. There you go. Kyle? Kyle's a broke-ass motherfucker. <laughs> <can't get> <laughs> he can't afford to get it. Um, I was actually hoping to review it, but I couldn't get a North American code, so Brad ended up reviewing it with European code, and there we have it. Well, all right. Fuckers. Womp, womp, womp. <laughs> <laughs> all right, let's head on to the next review. Liam, you want to take this one, since it's uh, the, your game? Yep. Uh, so I reviewed Samurai Warriors Chronicles 3, and I gave it 2.8 out of 5, and I said, quote, Samurai Warriors Chronicles 3 is a tedious and repetitive game that will see you mindlessly slash your way through thousands of enemies without a care for the story that it tries to create around the main missions. With a 10-15 to hour story mode, you'll be wishing it was over by the end of the first five hours. So, yeah. um, (laughs) Basically, just take any other Samurai Warriors game, Dynasty Warriors, anything like that, try to give it a story that nobody's ever going to care for, Make it a portable exclusive, and yeah, you have Samurai Warriors Chronicles 3. There wasn't much to enjoy about this game, other than the fact that it let you make your own character, so you got so you felt a little bit more involved in it, but other than that, it was just hammering square button constantly over and over again for up to 10 to 15 hours, and I was bored. Huh. I was so bored, <laughs> and I think I... I think my Vita genuinely needs a new square button because towards the end it seemed to get a little bit unresponsive. Uh oh. So yeah. Well, that's the game was good. probably just like stop pressing square for fuck's sakes. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I try, I tried to use triangle, which was your heavy attack, but you know, it just wasn't as effective as using square. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. Yeah. Yeah. The Samurai Warrior games and Dynasty Warriors style games—they've never appealed to me. So, definitely not gonna pick this one up. Probably for Me the best. Either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a, it's for the best. I I wouldn't recommend it. Yeah. Well, all right. 
definitely check out the full review if you are a fan of those types of games, because maybe you like hitting that square button repeatedly. So, <laughs> anyways, <laughs> next review, Kyle, you want to take it? All right, this one's Sparkle Unleashed. It was reviewed by Colin, and he gave it a 3.3 out of 5, saying, quote, Sparkle Unleashed may offer little in terms of new ideas, but there's no denying its winning formula of addicting gameplay and eye-catching visuals, end quote. I've never played a Sparkle game, and I don't plan to. What about you guys? <laughs> yeah, same here. <laughs> I, um, when I was writing a sensible game in the site that I came to before the Vita Lounge, um, I actually had a code for Sparkle 2, and I was really, really surprised by it, actually. Um, it added a good twist to the general match 3 game, and I enjoyed it. Uh, I think I have a code for Sparkle Unleashed on the PS4 somewhere, so... I may give that a go, actually, and see see if I'll enjoy it. Well, all right. You'll have to report back to us on that. <laughs> Shall do. <laughs> Kyle and I don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> those match three games, man, I fucking can't play any more of those. I've, I've played too many in that, and now I'm like, yeah, no, that's I've played them all. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, all right. Let's jump into the next review, and this one is reviewed by me. It is... Lego Jurassic World, and I gave it a 4.3 out of 5. And quoting myself, For old gamers and young gamers, Lego Jurassic World is a great game to make it to our PlayStation Vitas. Even with its minor flaws, it compacts four movies into one fun Lego experience. End quote. So yeah, I mean, it's if you watch the movies, it follows the stories pretty well. It jumps around a bit, but it's a Lego game. You go around destroying blocks and finding secrets and enjoying a goofy story so if you like the jurassic park and world movies then definitely pick this up because i loved it it's a lot of fun liam did you get it i didn't but i want it uh i've got a lot of lego games to catch up on already so um i'll put this to the side for a, for a little while but i do want this so i'll wait for it to go down in price a little yeah kyle i know you're broke but is it something i don't even know if you <laughs> like lego games I'm not a fan of Lego games at all. However, I'm such a fan of Jurassic Park oh, that I would play this. Really? <laughs> so, now. Oh, yes, I read your review and I was like, hmm. Other than <laughs> the, the whole like, you know, Lego trope of let's not kill anybody, I'm definitely liking what you're putting down. So I, I'm thinking I might pick this one up. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it does appeal to a younger audience because it's Legos and stuff like that. So there is scenes in the movie where you're like, "Oh, this scene, this person gets torn to shreds," but nope, it's a goofy little dinosaur Lego interaction type thing, and they they get away. So it's kind of like, eh, but <laughs> it should have been cheesy and like have it like the dinosaur bite the person in half, and then they just Lego themselves back together. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean, it's 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 pretty fun though. So. Definitely read the full review if you are a Lego fan or a Jurassic Park fan or just interested in this game. Check it out. So let's jump into the next review. Uh, Liam, you want to take this one? Okay, and um, the next game is Breach and Clear, and it was reviewed by Will, and he gave it a 2 out of 5. And he says, quote, Breach and Clear is a repetitive mess that has no variety in its game modes. Tactical RPG fans may find some enjoyment in this game, but there's no way they'll make it to the end without dying from bottom first. Ouch. <laughs> that does not sound like a good game at all. And I just have to say that this game was so bad that Will doesn't even want to review for us anymore, and now he's just moved the news. <laughs> That's how bad this game was. So, like, what, what the fuck? <laughs> well, have any of you guys played it? No. <laughs> Liam? No. Um, I'm not one for tactical RPGs, so I wouldn't play it at all. I wouldn't even go anywhere near it. <laughs> huh. Well, I guess I'm the only one that's played it. And I actually enjoyed it a bit, but I didn't get that far because I got distracted with other games. So maybe if I kept digging into it, I'd slowly start to realize what he's talking about, where it gets very repetitive and boring. But I enjoyed the part, where, like parts where you could like upgrade each of your weapons and each person, because you have like a squad of four characters or whatever. You can literally customize their weapon like crazy. Like you could have one guy have like an M16 with a laser sight that has a grip on the front. Meanwhile, your other team has or other person has the same exact gun but no grip on the front, and 
like an ACOG scope so that they have better accuracy. It's like, Jesus, so much stuff in it. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I enjoyed it for a little bit, but like I said, I got distracted with other games, so I haven't really jumped into it lately. <laughs> uh-huh. So, yeah, definitely read that review and let us know what you think. Uh, so, Kyle, you want to take the last one? All right. Before we get into that, everyone send your condolences to Will for having played that. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, last review of the week that we're going to talk about, and that's Sketch Cross. And it was reviewed by Brad, and he gave it a 2.8 out of 5, saying, quote, Sketch Cross brings a new type of logic puzzle to the Vita, and while, those, while these nonograms start off interesting, they eventually become a frustrating guessing game. Some odd design choices are confusing, but when the puzzles work, the game is solid. End quote. So it seems like he enjoyed it when it kind of worked, but when it didn't, uh, yeah. Well, that that, that, that makes sense. <laughs> who the fuck enjoys games when they don't work? <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you're interested in puzzle games, you should probably check out his review, because this one, I guess, is a little bit different. And, uh, that whole nonogram thing, I, I still don't get it. I didn't look too much into it, but I was like, what the fuck am I doing here? <laughs> Some sort of, like, you use the solution of the puzzle to build the puzzle, but the solution is a picture, and if you can get the picture beforehand, you don't need the puzzle or something? I have no idea. It's messed up, so go read his review. Yeah, um, I don't even know. I've, I don't know. Have either of you guys even heard of this one before? A lot of people haven't heard of it. I I played it. I uh, enjoyed parts of it, but I don't know. I mean, it's like Sudoku, basically. And yeah, if you like Sudoku. To be honest, I find Sudoku like watching paint dry, so <laughs> <laughs> I, would, I wouldn't, again, go anywhere near that. <laughs> yeah. Well. Yeah, if I want to play Sudoku, I'll just, you know, play Sudoku. <laughs> yeah. There you go. So yeah, definitely check out that review from Brad and choose wisely if it sounds interesting to you. (laughs) Well, all right. That's all the reviews. Quite a bit. So definitely check out all the reviews and you could be broke if any of these games catch your interest. Really? (laughs) Yeah. Let's jump into the new releases to talk about other games that you can drop some money on, possibly. So take it away with those new releases. All right, so let's get into those new releases. So North America, we are getting Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 3 V Generations for $39.99. We are also getting J-Star's Victory vs. Plus, which is also $39.99. And Samurai Warriors Chronicles 3, which is also $39.99. And... Almost last but not least, Whispering Willows for twelve forty nine. It is it is also on sale for nine ninety nine if you have PlayStation Plus. And just releasing, I think it came out today, as of recording this other portion of the podcast. Uh, what is it? R No Surge, something owed to an unborn star, some weird long name. I can't remember the exact name. <laughs> you missed the plus, but yeah, same same thing. Yeah, that one. And I don't know the exact price. I think it's thirty nine ninety nine as well. Yes, it is. And then the physical edition, limited edition, I think is forty nine ninety nine, but that's a guess. And yeah, so anyways, there's a ton of sales. There's some themes on the store, including some Hyperdimension Neptunia stuff. And yeah, go check it out. Kyle, what are we getting in Europe? All right. Well, Europe is getting 2013 Infected Wars though it's not available in Australia or New Zealand, for £4.49 or €5.49. Euros. They're getting Arno Surge Plus, Ode to an Unborn Star, though it's not available in Bahrain, Kuwait, Lebanon, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, or the United Arab Emirates. And it's £32.99, €39.99, Euros, or Australian dollars, $59.95. They're also getting Whispering Willows, though it's not available in Bahrain, Kuwait, Lebanon, Oman, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, or the United Arab Emirates, and it's available for £9.79, uh, €12.49, and Australian dollars, eighteen ninety five. Then, there is also Hyperdimension Neptunia Rebirth 3 V-Generation, which is now available in physical format, 
the digital format comes out next week, and I believe it's thirty nine ninety nine pounds or no thirty nine ninety nine euros to buy, but I'm not a hundred percent sure on that. So yeah, All if right. you're interested, there you go. Sweet, tons of games. Let's go back to the podcast. All right, thanks for those new releases. We've got a few here. Kyle, I know you're broke, so I won't even talk to you right now. <laughs> Liam, what are you getting? What do you got? Okay. So um, I already have Samurai Warriors Chronicles 3 as I reviewed that. So, yeah, that. Um, have a Dimension Neptune Uriba 3. Well, I have the other two, so it'd be rude not to get the third one. So I'll <laughs> buy that at some point. And as I say, I've already ordered Geostar's Victory Versus Plus. So that should be with me by the time we're finished recording the podcast, I would think. Yeah. Yeah. What about that uh, Whispering Willows? Is that one coming to Europe? Uh, it is, but I've never heard of it, so I'll have to look into it a bit more. Ah, well. Kyle, I, I'll go to you. Which games do you wish you could get? All right. So, as we talk about all the time when we talk about these Neptunia games, I haven't <laughs> played them. I have them. <laughs> I, or, well, I have the first one. Um, and I think I started it and got like 15 minutes into it and then was distracted by another game. So, um, but from what I hear of them, they're good and I kind of want to play them. So I might get to that eventually. Um, J stars, as I said, I wanted, I wanted to review, but couldn't get a code. So that's what happens when you're broke ass motherfucker. And <laughs> moving on to the other two, Samurai Warriors Chronicles 3, I'm not interested in at all. Not a fan of Dynasty Warriors or um, Samurai Warriors style games. Just don't interest me. Um, and Whispering Willows, I'm kind of apprehensive about because I read about it and didn't see any like images or anything of the game and I was like hmm this kind of sounds interesting and then I saw the screens when I put up the store post and I was like hmm this kind of looks lame so <laughs> I, don't, I don't know if it's just they haven't or like it doesn't I don't know appeal well when you're not looking at it in motion or what the hell but it looks kind of cheesy and I was like yeah I don't know so I'll have to look into that one more before I decide but yeah yeah well, for me, Hyper Dimension Neptunia 3, I've got it, played a little bit of it, and I'm just too busy with other stuff to really jump into it anymore. <laughs> uh, J-Stars Victory vs. Plus, I am definitely going to play a lot more of it. I've got just got it, as I mentioned in the what we've been playing. And Samurai Warriors Chronicles 3, don't care, not going to pick it up unless I get it sent to me. That's the only way I'll actually give it a go. And then Whispering Willows, eh, it's not grabbing my attention too much to really need to get it, and there's a lot of other games I need to complete before I buy more games like I just bought J-Star, so. <laughs> so, yeah. But yeah, quite a few releases there, so definitely a lot of different games to choose from. So, yeah. Well, let us jump into the news now. We've got a decent amount here, so... Sit back and relax. I almost just read the ESRB stuff, so that was a no-no. All right, first up. Last week, we brought news that Steins Gate Zero would be releasing this fall in Japan, but we know now... We, wait, but we now... There we go. But we now have a concrete release date for the sequel to the popular visual novel series. We still have no details on the game's story, but we do know that the game will release in Japan on November 19th and will set back Japanese fans 6,800 yen. Speaking of Steins Gate, 5BP has revealed the North American release date for the Western localization of the original game, and it's August 25th, a date nearly three months after the European release on June 5th. Can you wait that long for a North American version, or is it time to bite the bullet and import? Only you can decide. For more news on Steins Gate and Steins Gate Zero, be sure to stay tuned to the View Lounge. And I'm going to wait, because I pre-ordered that special edition. It's going to be terrible waiting three months, or wait... No, another month. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Two months, pretty much, from right now. Yeah. <laughs> All right, next up. The latest issue of Dengeki PlayStation has dropped, and with it comes a host of new information regarding the upcoming dungeon crawler Death Under the Labyrinth from Compile Heart. The most important piece of new info is the Japanese release date, which has been slated for October 8th. 
The game will cost 6,800 yen, which is roughly 34.98 euros and 54.90 uh, US at retail. 6,000 yen. Wait, that was weird. At retail. Okay, 6,000 yen for the download, which is 30.86 euros and 48.44 US with the limited edition costing 8,800 yen, which is 45.27 euros and 71.05 US. It was also revealed that a trillion form will be made available for all pre-order copies of the game. This will be available to use in in-game, and is part of a collaboration with Makai Shin Trillion, another Compile Heart title that is part of the Makai Ichiban Kan brand. Also mentioned was the game's f form change system, which allows you to change into four different forms, and the Demon Stone system, which lets you remember a special skill or enhance your abilities. For all the latest information on Death Under the Labyrinth, keep checking back to TVL. Next up, on Tuesday, Nippon Ichi Software released an eerily creepy teaser to promote their next project. Seemingly taking inspiration from Slender, the teaser has a first-person perspective as an unknown protagonist searches the wilderness for something or someone. We now have further details on the title, however, thanks to the latest issue of Dengeki PlayStation. The game will be titled Yomawari and features a female protagonist who is searching for her older sister and pet dog. She only has a flashlight at her disposal and mo must search a creepy town at night to find what has happened to her relative and pet. It has been promised that players will see things that shouldn't be seen. I'm not playing this game. Yomawari Wari. Bleh. Yo. Yoma Wari has been given a release date of October 29th in Japan, unsurprisingly a few days before Halloween. Okay, um, next up, as us Western folks sit and wait for a possible localization of God 82 Rage Burst, it turns out that another game in the series will be making its way to our beloved handheld. Revealed in a recent issue of Dengaki PlayStation, God Eat a Resurrection will be an enhanced remake of the original game in the series for PlayStation Vita. The game's production is said to be around halfway done, and a new fighting style will be incorporated into the game known as Predator Style, which will allow players to take enemies to take to battle enemies in midair at high speeds. The remake of the PSP title will also feature enhanced graphics to match those of God Eater 2 Rage Burst as well as containing an entirely new story set after the events of God Eater 2. God Eater Resurrection is set to release on October 29th in Japan, with no word yet on a Western localization. The next game in Gust's Atelier series has been revealed, and is set to be released in Japan on September 25th. Atelia Sophie will see players take the role of Sophie Neunmuller, as well as meeting a character known as Prafta, an amnesiac girl who plays an important role in the game's story. As usual, make sure you keep an eye on the Vita Lounge for any updates on the Atelier series. Lootin' and Shootin' is the upcoming is the name of an upcoming title from Curves Digital and Size 5 Games. Back in February, we brought news that Cybercrime Cape at the Swindle will be heading to PlayStation Vita. Four months since the original announcement, we finally have details of when the game will be hitting everyone's favourite handheld gaming device. The Swindle will arrive on Sony's platforms first, with the game releasing simultaneously on PlayStation Beta, PlayStation 3 and PlayStation 4 on July 28th in Europe and North America. Set in a steampunk world, levels are procedurally generated as you look to rob as much, of, much loot as possible whilst sidestepping a whole host of formidable foes. Developer Dan Marshall gave further details on his latest project. The Swindle is the kind of game that I always wanted to play. One minute you're sneaking past robot security guards to grab a load of loot, and the next you're being chased by police choppers and drones, desperately trying to avoid capture and an awkward and embarrassing death. Procedurally generated adventures are all the rage these days, but there's nothing with stakes quite as high as the Swindle. Excited? The wait is almost over. All right, moving on, guys. Those of you with a penchant for football management may have been disappointed when Sega and Sports Interactive didn't follow up the 2014 release of Football Manager Classic 2014 with a new and updated version. 
I know Paul was disappointed, but it seems that there could be hope. The Spanish arm of the retailer game have posted a listing for Football Manager 15 on their website. Our Spanish is awful, so thanks to Google Translate, the page roughly translates to, quote, With Football Manager, the simulator more realistic, detailed, and immersive football management clubs can control many, or can control more than 50 countries worldwide, including all major European leagues. Football Manager 2015 allows you to get in the skin of a football coach. In this game, you can decide who plays and who stays on the bench, set the tactics, harangue you guys, your guys, make substitutions, and instruct the ball while still a game in 3D. <laughs> Obviously, that's a flawed translation, but <laughs> there you go. Paul quite enjoyed the first title and certainly wouldn't be adverse to seeing a newer edition. And given that we won't be seeing a new FIFA, Vita owners are due some great news. All right, next up. Aqua Plus has officially delayed Dungeon Travelers 2-2 to 2016 in Japan. The company cited various matters for the delay. If that wasn't enough, Aqua Plus officially confirmed the cancellation of Jasmine, an adventure game the company announced alongside Utawarumono, False Masks, initial announcement in 2011, before it was reannounced this year. It again cited various matters as a reason. Who knows what's going on over there, but they better figure it out. They always say, though, a delayed game is better than a broken one, so we can just hope this is good for the game in the end. Tribute Games have been hard at work bringing their next game, Curses and Chaos, to the PlayStation Vita, and we have a few new details in regards to the game's launch. It's official. When the game launches on PlayStation platforms, it will be cross-buy, cross-play, and cross-save between the Vita and PlayStation 4. In addition, the Vita version will also support ad hoc cooperative play, as well as being compatible with PlayStation TV. For more information on Curses and Chaos, be sure to keep those eyes and ears locked on everything the Vita Lounge. Alright, next up, Helldivers has proven to be a fun and chaotic adventure. Fans of the game have spent hours fighting for Steeper Earth and protecting it from the enemy infestations that threaten it. Now new clues are coming to light that indicate the fight for liberty and democracy might be appearing in a store near you. A physical release retail or a physical retail release of Helldivers that appears likely. Our friends at the Brazilian Games Rating Boards have once again leaked some new information that has caused a few eyebrows to raise. Thank you, Brazil. They have announced the new rating for a release of Helldivers entitled Helldivers Super Earth Ultimate Edition. While this alone doesn't mean much, it might e yeah. It might when coupled with one other clue. Play Asia has now put up a pre-order for a release of Helldivers that will be available in August. All indications are that this is for a retail release of the game and not a digital code. Of course, we won't know for certain until it comes out. Hopefully, if Helldivers does come to retail, it won't be restricted to just Asia, and it will be released to retailers in Western markets as well. Only time will tell. If, the, if this rumor proves to be true, then the fight for Super Earth just got that much more interesting. Next up, developer 5BP has announced that the popular anime Punchline will be arriving on the PlayStation Vita. Aw, oh, yeah! <laughs> never even heard of it. <laughs> Kyle's excited. Anyways, continuing here. While details for the game are scarce, the anime is based on a young man named Yuta Iridatsu, who believes that if he sees a woman's panties, humanity will be destroyed. <laughs> wow. Did not see that coming. <laughs> I'm... Is it weird that I'm interested now? <laughs> you gotta watch the anime, Tyler, and then you can play it. All right. Well... All right. I'll continue here. <laughs> According to Zero Escape director Kotoro Uchikosh, there will be two versions of the game. That's based on the endings of the anime. The game is currently in production, and many questions will be answered regarding the different versions. Well, all right, Punchline is scheduled for a Q4 2015 release in Japan. There's still no word, still no word on a Western release, and I highly doubt it would. But pain. we deserve it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I don't know how I would. What's the word? How I would. Uh... 
Why can I not think of the word? The panties have got you all fucked up. Alex. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how I would convince... No. Basically, what I'm trying to say is I don't know how I'm going to get away with buying this game and it, trying to explain it to my girlfriend. <laughs> so what you see here, if he sees the girl's <laughs> panties, the world comes to an end. <laughs> <laughs> well, it, it's it, it's a little bit more complicated than that. So oh, if you is watch it? the anime, then you can <laughs> you can actually explain it to her properly. Because that's if you explain it to her properly, then she might not get as mad. <laughs> I figured out the Let's... word I was looking for. Justify. <laughs> Justify. There you go. Yeah, that was the word I was looking for. Anyways, yeah, I don't even know about that. She'll be like, uh huh. You just want to see some <laughs> panties, don't you? And I'm like, no, no, no. If I do, the world will end. Silly girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Anyways, next story here. That Definitely. <laughs> mark that on your calendars, people. Q4 2015. Punchline. Panties in your eyes. All right. <laughs> uh, next up. Much to the dismay of rhythm fans everywhere, the much-delayed IAVT Colorful will almost assert it... Assur- why can't I read words now? Panties. That word. It will be coming to the West, most likely. <laughs> In an interview with Siliconera, producer Kenichiro Takaki said the following, quote, If it were possible, I'd love to bring it over, but there are a lot of difficulties involved in that process. Now that said, there's no reason why you can't import it, Takaki's, or, end quote, Takaki said in an interview with Silicon Era also, quote, since it's a music title and since music is arguably one of the most protected media types artists have, that just means more doors to knock on and more approvals to get. It's far more difficult than a Senran Kagura title, end quote. When the producer says that the only way Western players can play this game is to import it, it's never a good sign. IA VT Colorful is releasing July 30th in Japan, so will you be importing it? Okay, so next up, Atlas has revealed some of Persona 4 Dancing All Night's game modes via a press release. And it reads as follows. Story mode. Persona 4 Dancing All Night's story mode is presented in similar format to Persona 4 Arena and Persona 4 Arena's Ultimaxes. It follows the investigation team as they solve the mystery behind the midnight stage and how it ties to the to Risa in, in her junior group, Kanam in Kitchen. Free Dance Mode. Free Dance Mode lets you practice the game's songs and aim for their personal high score. You can try out the songs with the, diff- with the difficulty partner and costume of your choosing. Shopping. At Tanaka's Amazing Commodities, you can purchase character costumes and more with P, do- with P dollars and from performing well during songs. Collection. Music player, character profiles, gallery high scores and online leaderboards, and more. Persona 4 Dancing All Night is already out in Japan and releases on September 29, 2015 in North America, with a European release scheduled for fall. Good news, Riven fans. As part of its first print bonus campaign, from July 7th to August 31st, Taiko Drum Master V version will be adding three free downloadable songs. There will be many add-on songs, but the three of the campaign are set to be Tutti from Sound Euphon- Euphonium in the anime category, Juchuten Vivace from by Gumi in the Vocaloid category, and Dr. Wily Stage 1 from Mega Man 2 in the video game category. Taiko Drum Master V version is set will be released in Japan on July 9th, 2015. Get in line for those first re- bonuses with a pre-order now. Idea Factory International has revealed the release date and other details for their upcoming Otome visual novel Amnesia Memories. Amnesia Memories is a story about a girl who wakes up with her memories taken and her journey to recover the past and get on with her love story. The catch is that if she reveals her condition she'll never recover these memories. Stumble through your own world as a complete stranger, trying to figure out what was without jeopardizing what is, or it'll be game over for you. This is definitely a game of skill and finesse, so think before you act. The game's key features have been revealed as the following. Love your own way. 
Select one of five guys as your love interest, each with multiple branching story paths. Picking your romantic interest creates different background scenarios for each character, essentially creating many distinct worlds with more than 20 endings. Affection, trust and suspicion. Three parameters affect your relationship with your future love. Make the right conversation choices and you'll keep affection and trust maxed out, but if suspicion gets too high, you'll be at risk of a bad ending. College games use touch controls to play mini games like rock, paper, scissors and air hockey against other characters. Beating them will unlock special images. A picture, a thousand words, meet certain requirements and you'll be able to unlock voiced images in the gallery. Touching certain areas of the image will play dialogue and feelings that couldn't previously be expressed. Interested? Well, the good news is that the game will be coming to the West with release parity hitting North America on August 25th and Europe on August 26th. But as with all things, there's a bit of a catch. It'll be digital only release and will be available in Japanese audio with English subtitles only. Are you ready to lose your memories? The wait is almost over. All right, guys, home stretch. As PlayStation Plus celebrates its fifth anniversary, Fred Dutton at the EU PlayStation blog has announced that there are some changes coming for European members. As of this July, the free games for the month will now be released on the first Tuesday of each month instead of Wednesday. This means that Europe and North America will now get their free games on the same day. In the comments section on the PlayStation blog, Dutton stated, quote, Hey folks, as of this month, Plus Games go live in both EU and US on the first Tuesday of the month, no longer Wednesday in EU. The first Tuesday in July is 7th of July, hence why the games aren't launching this week. End quote. New gamers in Europe will not have to wait a day after their brethren in North America to get their games. Good news for everybody. Woohoo! Whee! Compile Heart have revealed that in Moero Crystal, you will be able to bond with two girls at the same time. Oh yeah! Compile Heart's previous title, Monster Mon Piece, had a similar feature that could get pretty tiresome if you were massaging the many underleveled monster girls. And it is said that in Moero Crystal, however, this touch feature has been made easier so your hands won't be as worn during play. The game is also said to include more Battle Scratch touchscreen features that are to be revealed in the near future. Set to release in Japan on September 25th, be sure to keep an eye on the Vita Lounge for more on Moero Crystal as and when we have it. And the last piece of news. A Himoto Umaru-chan game has been announced for release on PlayStation Vita by Furyu. Details are scanned at the moment, but the game will be called Himoto Umaro-chan Umaro Training Plan and will have the player helping Umaro-chan with the quality of her work in a training simulation type setting. Himoto Umaro-chan Umaro Training Plan will be available in Japan sometime this winter with details very likely to follow between now and then. And that's the news. Aw, oh, yeah. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Quite a bit. Yeah, it's been a long time getting here. Usually we get here quicker than that. <laughs> yeah, I think we, we talked a lot in the beginning. <laughs> That's okay. You guys love our voices, right? Right? Right. Yeah. That's what I thought. You can't yeah. respond because this is not live. Boom. <laughs> is it? Yeah, it's live right now for us. Yeah, but they can't respond because they aren't hearing it live, Tyler. Are they not, though? I mean, to them it's live. <laughs> That's enough, Tyler. So they, they don't really know. <laughs> That's enough. That's enough. So moving on. <laughs> As usual, we usually go to talking points after those news pieces, and we talk about announced or released games we're looking forward to from the week. What looks good, Liam? Let's skip Tyler this time. Ouch. Um, Taiko Drum Master. I, st I still want that to be localized because that looks great. Um... Also, the swindle sounds interesting. I would I wouldn't mind playing that. And other than that, uh, punchline punchline sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> and if Hell has got a physical release, I'd also buy that. But yeah. Oh, I'd Persona Four Dance all night. I will be getting that. <laughs> all right. Well, 
Kyle, what about you? I'm not even going to throw it to myself. <laughs> All right, then. Um, for me, um, I'm definitely interested in both of those Steins Gate games. Um, I'm kind of pissed that we have to wait for that other one, but I don't have any money anyway, so I guess that makes sense. <laughs> um, <laughs> and uh, I think we're hopefully going to get more after this one, so that you know, when Zero comes around, I'll be hopefully playing that one as well. Um, Yomawari. That looks awesome. Tyler says, no way he's not playing that. I say, where is it? Give me it. I'll play it right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I, I'm hoping they do something where I can play it, whether it's English subtitles or what, because that sounds interesting. I love me some horror games. Um, the God Eater titles, um, we mentioned those kind of with that God Eater resurrection. Um, super interested in those if they would you know, give us proper versions. I'm not really down to playing the PSP version. I tried it and I was like, eh, just, I don't know. I'm, I'm spoiled with all these Vita games. <laughs> Anywho, um, what else? Okay, um, Punchline, of course. Um, I watched the anime and I thought it was awesome. Lots of twists and, and turns and a whole bunch of really Dead weird wedges. stuff that happens. Um, <laughs> yeah, wedges. Um, <laughs> And yeah, lots of panties. Um, so if you're down for that kind of etchiness, then that's a game and an anime for you. Um, and it's definitely one for me. Um, <laughs> also, um, Kenichiro Takaki's IABT Colorful. I'm super interested in anything that the Senran Kagura guy comes up with. So, you know, I'll, I'll probably be looking into getting that somehow, um, sometime in the future. Um, Tycho Drum Master, and I'm kind of, I don't know, I almost want to download the demo on my Japanese account, but I'm kind of too lazy right now, so I'll come back to that. Um, <laughs> Amnesia Memories, this Otome game, I kind of want to play it just to see what the hell it's about, kind of, because I know, like, you know, most games are made with mostly, mostly men, so if this game was made with men and it's about like girls wanting men it's probably going to be like way off <laughs> if it was if it was made with like a lot of girl you know insight then maybe i'll get some insight so let's play this game so it's for research but... <laughs> definitely definitely for research <laughs> um <laughs> and uh yeah more crystal i'd play it if it had a good game mode but i don't really know what it's about yet so other than the fact that it's you know this one's bras and not panties or whatever i i have no idea huh so yeah well all right let's jump into what i'm excited for since you guys talked a lot about your games so from here it looks like i want oh man if that helldivers game is coming physical i might just drop money on it but i i shouldn't because i really don't need it because i haven't played the game in a while but i'm a sucker for retail games Talk me out of it, Kyle. Talk me out of it. You're just a sucker, Kyle. Or st you just called yourself your own self. <laughs> well, I actually, <laughs> I, I called you, Tyler. Um, me, but whatever. You're confused. Doesn't really matter. <laughs> Go get more coffee. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, I don't know. It's awkward. I wasn't expecting to be thrown to. This is a fucked up situation. It's all your fault, Tyler. I like to I do that you. to you all the time. See if you're, like, paying attention or not. You know what? I'm I'm having a bad week. You're making it worse. Ooh. You want to get fired, bro? <laughs> well, what about my GoFundMe thing? That should be making it better. Well, you know what? That's not for you. <laughs> Go donate, people. Shameless plug. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Steins Gate Zero being announced, that's awesome, but I still want to play the first one, of course. And since they announced the release date over here, I definitely pre-ordered that special edition. And I'm really excited for that. Um, so if I love the first one, then I'm definitely going to be excited for the new one uh, that got announced. So, yeah. What else? What else is here? Oh, man. Why can I not think of anything? Oh, of course, Persona 4 Dancing All Night. I'm ready for that. I'm excited to see if I actually like it or if I cannot stand it, but... Regardless, I I pre-ordered that special edition as well, so I'll be dropping a ton of money on that and crossing my fingers that it's good. 
Uh, I'd be dancing for five minutes instead of dancing all night. That is very <laughs> true. That would be a sad story. Yes, it would. <laughs> but anyways, uh, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much it from the news. I mean, there's a, there's obviously the other games that I'm excited for that we talk about all the time. So I'll just leave it at that. But there we go. Let's. Uh, should we mention what happened, Kyle, with, uh, with my... All internet? right, so, yeah. <laughs> Um, part of the reason why I'm a little confused here is because we're actually recording this podcast over two completely different days. Um, we had a little internet hiccup, whereas Tyler's internet just decided to quit working completely. And so at the start of his little what he's looking forward to there, that's actually a jump in from a whole nother day. So that's yep. Why <laughs> shit happens sometimes? We gotta, you know, try and smooth over, you know, these little bumps. And sometimes smoothing them over isn't so smooth, like what just <laughs> happened right there. Yeah. So yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it's fixed now, obviously. And it actually was a problem. Like the guy came down and was like, "Yeah, something was broken on the outside cable area." And I was like, "Oh, well, yay that it's fixed now." Woo. <laughs> So I've Good. been I've been without internet for like two or three days I think. Wait, what's today? Today's Friday. We started recording on Wednesday morning, so yeah, it's been down yeah, for a couple days. days. Yeah, <laughs> it's been hell. It's been hell, Kyle. Yeah, I can't imagine, man. Which also explains why Liam is not here anymore. So I'm sorry that guess that game is gonna have to be postponed. But I saved the list when my internet died, so I have the same list ready for when Liam wakes up and is actually ready to cast. So, yeah, burn. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually is funny because uh, Liam just messaged me dr- right now on Skype and he's drunk. So he's definitely not drunk. Actually, that'd be pretty funny. But he's not. We've got to stay structured. We'd re- be recording for another hour or so if he would join drunk. So get mad at him for being drunk. He told me that he'd be ready on Friday. And guess what? It's Friday and he's drunk. So uh, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> Well, all right, let's continue on. Kyle, what do we got up next in the talking points? All right, so next I thought we'd talk a little bit about this little milestone that the Vita has hit in Japan. And basically what it boils down to is that Media Crate, the company who manages the Japanese game sales chart, has reported that the Vita has recently hit 4 million sales between the Vita console and the PlayStation TV in Japan. Yes. I agree. A little clap there. <laughs> um, individual sales show uh, that about 160,000 of the sales figure is PlayStation TV um, sales, and then the rest of that is Vita sales. So pretty good over there. Um, like, I mean, this is no 3DS numbers, and that's not what we're comparing this to. We're comparing this to you know, the last horrible numbers that we heard. So um, (laughs) we're trending up, and that's always a good thing. And actually, just recently, I heard uh, that sales numbers are trending up again because of the fact that um, Persona 4 Dancing All Night just released there, and apparently it's a big hit. So Yeah, Yeah, they'd be dancing all night over there. (laughs) Indeed, and if it sells consoles, then all the power to them. Yeah. Well, all right. Congratulations over there in Japan. Now let's bring over that heat over here, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> well, all right. If that's all we got for the talking points. Let's jump into the listener mail. You want me to read the first one, Kyle? Absolutely. Oh, well, all righty. So first up, we got an email. I think it's an email from Adam Robo Addy. It might be Twitter. I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, it's Twitter. <laughs> okay. Well, Twitter then. He asks, what's your dream port to Vita? Mine would be Fallout New Vegas. Skate. Port <laughs> a skate game. And if you want a specific one, skate to. Port that to be there. That's my dream port. That'd be heaven. Yes, it would. So <laughs> mine would have to be a Grand Theft Auto. Like a, just a giant world. It doesn't have to be as big as Grand Theft Auto V, but a big sprawling open world. Go around and shoot people and have fun. <laughs> Not that well, those things go. are meant to be fun, but... Grand Theft Auto. You know what I mean. It's Grand Theft Auto. <laughs> or, uh, I, I don't think it'll ever happen. It doesn't sound like it's ever going to happen, because that's just how this Western market seems to be going now. Uh, a new Call of Duty by a developer that actually can handle themselves. 
because with what we've seen with Killzone Mercenary, if a dev gives the Vita enough time and support, you can make some crazy ass games. So why not give it to a developer that has a good track record and Activision would be like, holy shit, people actually are buying this game, not, holy shit, people aren't buying our game, I wonder why. Oh, maybe Activision is because it's shit. <laughs> Anyways, that's a that's a rant for me. Kyle's enjoying it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm over here trying not to laugh, Tally. <laughs> All right. Well, let's move it along. Thanks, Adam, for your question, and also to comment on your Fallout in New Vegas. That'd be badass. I love Fallout. Meh, I'm not a big Fallout fan, but you, you buy all the power to anybody who wants that. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, you want to take the next one, Kyle? All right, this one is from AM Gamer at Alberto Marcillo on Twitter, and he asks, "What games do you guys want for the rest of 2015?" And he says, "I want Mighty Number no. Nine." So, at least he gives us some input. I like that these people are giving some input. Yeah. What's your input, Tyler? What are you thinking? Hmm. I'm really excited for um, Resident Evil Revelations 2. That looks awesome, and I've been wanting... I mean, it, I don't think it's going to be super horror, but I've been looking for a game that makes me go, Woo! So, <laughs> yeah, that noise right there. Woo! What about you, Kyle? That's it? That's the only game you want for the rest of 2015, Tyler? Well... He gave one game, so I was given one game. But there's there's plenty of games. Well, fuck yeah, I'm giving a whole bunch of games. Well, I'll give them so, all. So <laughs> here we go. <laughs> um, Corpse Party Blood Drive. Bam. Um, I want to play the other ones first, but I'm probably gonna end up caving and playing this one um, because anything horror, I'm right there. <laughs> um, Danga and Rampa, another episode. Ultra Despair Girls. I'm super excited for that. I love the first and second thing in Rumpa. I got Tyler to play them, so there we go. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's yeah, I can't wait. And I'm excited that it's a different mechanic, so it's something kind of different, but it has that visual novel bit there too as well. So it's going to be awesome. Um, Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax. Uh, I want to kick some ass as Kirito and the whole anime gang of awesomeness that they, they're bringing <laughs> over here. Um, not a hero. Um, what else? You mentioned Resident Evil Revelations too, but I'm interested in that one as well. Uh, One Piece Pirate Warriors three. Still gonna play the first one, but I don't know. I'm I'm liking the looks of these trailers, so you know, <laughs> might cheat and grab that first. Um, <laughs> what else? Senran Kagura Estival Versus and Spoke Out Online Lost Song, which I've already called for review, so <laughs> don't worry, you'll be getting quality reviews of that one, not Tyler's shit. Ooh, no. burn. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Tyler's Tyler's doing well. He's doing better than he used to do. Less editing for me. This time I only had to fix up his spelling and grammar and I didn't have to, you know, maneuver his review. <laughs> <laughs> Came out ex exactly as you gave it to me, only with better spelling and grammar. <laughs> um, but anywho, um, what else? Oh, Severed. Uh, super excited to see what Drinkbox has for us with Severed. Um, I like pretty much everything they throw at us. So <laughs> yeah, I, I'm I'm excited for that for sure. Um, I don't know if I'm gonna jump in at Trails of Cold Steel, but I'm kind of excited for it. Legend of Heroes Trails of Cold Steel that's coming over, and I know Tyler's excited for that one, too. Oh, yeah. Um, I called that one for a review. <laughs> yes, he did. <laughs> um, and x Plays Lost Memories. I think that's the only other one I can really think of. So quite a few there. I think there's like 10 there that I named, and you know, one or two that you named. So. Yeah. yeah. There's plenty of games. I was just going to go with one, but Kyle just was going to outdo me, so I guess I'll... And that's only 2015. I, I made sure not to mention anything that's not that's like Japanese only or anything that's come out in 2016, so there you go. That's All right. Time. Surprised you didn't <laughs> mention Steins Gate or anything. Well, it, it's kind of already out, so I don't consider, you know... Well... If I really had the money, I could order it from fucking... Race digital and have them ship yeah. it to my door for free. Dan Ganrampa, another <laughs> episode is out already. Corpse not, Party. Not in the West. Though. I know, but same with the, the other games. 
that Stein's beer. Yeah, no, but you, you, okay, why don't you order up some dang and rapa another episode, Tyler, and read it for me. I can read it. <laughs> it's, it's like a line slashed with a doohickey over the right. <laughs> <It's> a... <laughs> yeah. You have enough problems with Japanese names that are written in English or Romaji. You can't even, I don't know. I'm not trusting you with some Japanese words <laughs> in in Japanese. <laughs> well, all right. Just saying. <laughs> Anyways, thanks, Alberto Marcillo, for your question and your input. So there you go. Moving on. Go ahead, Tyler. Take this one. All right. The next question is from CK at Street Er Street Er Street, and then U E R. So wait, U R E. There we go dyslexia kicking in anyways <laughs> <laughs> their question is how long do you think the Vita will be pushed by Sony and any news on a second gravity rush all right so I personally am of the mind and a lot of people are too um, that who gives a shit if Sony's pushing the Vita the Vita has kind of been tied to a whole bunch of things um, and uh, as far as I'm concerned, is going to be around as long as the PS4 is around. Just because of the fact that remote play plus all these third party and indie developers supporting it, there's just lots in the tube and there's bound to be more announced just, you know, between actually the day that this podcast first started and now Digimon Story Cyber Sleuth has been announced for North American release. So, like, I mean, they're coming all the time, Tyler. And, you don't have to worry about that kind of stuff. It's just you don't have to, you know, expect anything from Sony because they haven't really given us anything since, well, launch, pretty much. A <laughs> um, little, little bit here and there with publishing, but they haven't developed anything really big other than the launch stuff. So, meh. Whatever. Yep. Rolling on. Um, as for the news on a second Gravity Rush... Um, no news. Uh, they've, I, I believe they said they were holding back announcements on that front, and they've kind of alluded to a whole bunch of stuff. So I don't know if they're just kind of misdirecting or what the hell's going on. So I think we should just kind of wait for news on that one before we talk about it some more. What about you, Tyler? What do you think? Yeah, I pretty much agree with you on everything right there. <laughs> There's not really anything else I can add to that. It's just. Sony doesn't really care. I mean, I feel like uh, maybe over in Japan, Sony will be more noticeable with how they push the Vita because it's doing better over there. But still, even then, I don't know. Well, yeah, I I think the fact that uh, Sony Japan and Asia are supporting it so well um, is definitely a good thing because we're going to keep getting firmware updates just because of that. Um, So, like, even if they don't, you know, support us with some games, at least... Hopefully we'll be getting some new features and ironing out the shit that we have. Right. Um, so that's nice. And then just the fact that a lot of their games get begged so far, like hard over here. So we get, you know, the stuff that they they bring to us over in Japan. Because Sony Japan is actually doing stuff for the Vita. I'm like, ah, these Western Sonys. Yep. I mean, I see... Vita commercials on Sony Japan's or PlayStation Japan's YouTube channel all the time. All the time. It's like, wow, <laughs> they know how to advertise something. Crazy. They do. They do. <laughs> it's, it's weird. It's it's like Sony over here just has no idea. It's like they're like got blinders on. They just can't see. They're blinded but, by all those PS4 numbers. <laughs> they're blinded by something because I think... Uh, that definitely helps the fact that, you know, well, it's not, it's not that it's doing bad over in Japan, but it's not taking off like it is over here. Right. Uh, so, like, it leaves room for Vita to have some audience, too, and, you know, some right. stuff. <laughs> Instead of nothing. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right. Thanks, uh, CK, for your question. Um, so, yeah, we would be doing Guess That Game, or, like I said earlier, but Liam's drunk, so... Send your hate tweets at Liam <laughs> Hangover. There you go. So yeah, <laughs> right in his name, we should have expected it. Hangover. <laughs> yep. <laughs> well, all right, let's jump in to check this out. Kyle, what do we got? All right. Well, this one's kind of a little bit offbeat to what I usually recommend, and that 
it's that I'm recommending a lot of things, and they're not all necessarily Vita, which is kind of dun, funny, dun, but dun. they work on Vita. Because what I'm recommending is that you check out the Persona sale that's going on in North America right now. Um, pretty much every Persona game that's playable on Vita is on sale. Persona 1 all the way through Persona 4 Golden for pretty good prices. So if you're looking to get into Persona, or if you've played 4 and are looking to go back and explore more worlds, or if you're just RPG fanatic and you need some awesome RPGs to play, there you have it. They're all on sale. Pretty cheap prices. I think Persona 4 Golden is like $14.99, so like, if you don't have it, go get it and fucking play it right now. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Alright. There you go. Check those yes. out. So we would do threads, but we don't have any threads to check out. From well, the- yeah, there's not not a whole lot, but there's some, well, some, a lot of talk going on in the Digimon thread um, about the English release, so that's a we're looking topic. to talk Digimon. There you go. And uh, Anime Expo is going on right now, and that's actually where this Digimon uh, localization was announced by Bandai Namco. So there's some other things that are happening between now and the next podcast. And if you're looking for more information, there's an Anime Expo thread on the forum in other topics at the bottom. Well, all right. There is a lot of stuff to check out then. Yeah, kind of. So go sign up then. Yeah, definitely. We're almost at a thousand uh, members of the forum, and that's a thousand legit members because I prune the assholes, the bots, all the shit. All gone. <laughs> well, all right. No assholes. No assholes. Confirmed. <laughs> Con- <laughs> well, all right. Let's get out of here, Kyle. All right. It feels like a short episode because we're recording on a different day. <laughs> <laughs> So, yeah, it's, you know, hopefully it sews together well. <laughs> yeah, my editing skills, they're flawless, Kyle. We'll see. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyways, you can find everything. Wait, you, god damn it, you mixed this up. <laughs> All right, let me restart. If you've got listener mail or comments, contact us at, wait, contact us via media services at thevitalounge.net. You can find everything we talked about at thevitalounge.net, news, reviews, featured articles, store updates, the podcast, a community forum, and a magazine, both digital and physical. And speaking of that magazine, you can support the site and get the physical copies of the magazine via patreon.com slash thevitalounge. Also, we're on Twitter. Just look up at thevitalounge. I'm at Mr. PSV to reviews. Kyle is at Teflon Tactics. Liam's a douche. Uh, we're also on Facebook just look up the Vita Lounge. Uh, we're also on YouTube. Just go to youtube.com slash lounge play. We post up lounge plays. We post up the podcast. We post uh, bleh, previews. There we go. That's the word I was looking for. Previews for upcoming games for the month, which hopefully I can get July's done in time. My internet's been down, like we mentioned earlier, so I haven't been able to work on that for Kyle since his unfortunate accident. Uh, but I will get on that ASAP. Anyways... This podcast is available on iTunes, Podbean, Stitcher, YouTube, and via the direct download on the site. Go subscribe to us on there and rate us. Let us know how we're doing. That's it. We're out of here. Yep, and I'd just like to add screw Liam. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah!